Steve Jewin for MMAmania.com. This interview with insane Georgie Karakanyan was recorded on November 24, 2015. Georgie, you're on with the man, Steve Jewin of MMA Mania. Hello, Georgie. How's it going today? Good, man. How are you? I'm good. It's always good to talk to you. And, man, i got a bunch of questions to ask you. So let me just jump right in and say, how's the ACL? It's good. You know, I'm fighting December 4, and that means it's great. So you're fully healed, 100%, ready to go, no problems whatsoever. No, no problems, and uh, everything's good. Well, the guy you're fighting on December 4th is the guy who filled in for you when you got injured. So what are your thoughts on facing Daniel Weichel? Uh, I feel very confident going into this fight, facing him. Uh, good fighter, and just uh, looking forward for uh, December 4th. I'm sure you are. What were your thoughts when you saw that fight at the Kimbo versus Shamrock card? I mean, his, he looked pretty good in that first round. Yeah, he looked great. Uh, he just maybe got too emotional, but he, he looked good uh, against uh, uh, against uh, Patricio. And um, I just feel like his chin been. I think he's, I don't know how many times he's been knocked down in his career, but uh, his chin is very sensitive. So. Uh, you know, Patricio, he didn't respect Patricio's left hook, and he, he got caught. Well, five of his nine losses are by knockout, so you may be onto something there. So is that going to be your plan to put your heavy hands on his chin? Uh, you know, I think going into a fight, you can't always expect to get a knockout, especially in MMA, because it's such a, it's the most unpredictable sport. And uh, I'm just looking to uh, to put an exciting fight, fight for the fans, knowing that this is the, this is the last show of the year, and... Uh, you know, I'm going out there to look look for a finish, like all my fights. Do you feel there's any irony that you might end up being crowned the number one contender twice? Because you were essentially number one when you beat Bubba Jenkins, and now you've got to do it all over again. Yeah, you know, I, I just want to go out there and win impressively, and then l- let Scott Coker do, you know, whatever he thinks is the right decision. Uh, I'm not a matchmaker. I just, you know, strictly focus on my training and fighting and just performing the day of the fight, so... If I come out impressively, then um, they give me a title shot. I'll be happy. If they want me to fight next year, someone else, then uh, I'm down. I'm down for anything. Well, the other irony of it is that if you do win impressively and get that title shot, you won't be fighting Patricio now. You'll be fighting Daniel Strauss instead. Yeah, it you know it kind of sucks because you know I lost to Patricio, but you know I got to do what I got to do to make the most money, and I think getting a belt, that would be perfect, you know? Oh, of course. I can't argue with the logic there, but let's say you get that title shot, beat Daniel Strauss, would you want to have your first title defense against Patricio? Yeah, yeah it depends how I beat Daniel Strauss, you know? If, if I beat him really quick, then yeah, but if, if it goes all five rounds, you know, if they give me, maybe they'll do a rematch with me and Strauss, yeah, but... uh you know, most likely they'll make me fight Patricio, just knowing that, you know, he, he he's my only loss, like legit loss. Right, yeah. The, the but fact I'm, you, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm game for anything. But the fact that you guys have history is almost irresistible at this point. Yeah, you know, I just, let's let's see what happens. You know, right now I have a big, big task in my hands, Daniel Vichel, so uh, we'll see what happens after that. You said you think that Daniel Weichel may have a little bit of a suspect chin. What other chinks in the armor do you think there are when you look at him and his style? I think anything. You know, I just I just look at his uh, weaknesses and strengths. And um, I mean, he's a well-rounded fighter. Don't get me wrong, but uh, I don't think it's the right time to face me, especially coming off that knockout loss to Patricio. So, uh, you know, uh, anything can happen in the fight, but. Uh, you know, the day of the fight, I'm going to look to try to finish him every round, every second, every minute. I'm sure this will be another good one, but let me ask you, since you had a lot of time off between your last fight with Bubba Jenkins and this fight, I know some of that was rehabbing the injury, but what else have you worked on in the interim? I worked on a lot of, uh, you know, upper body. You know, my upper body got really big, and uh, I put a lot of muscle, so uh, which is good. And, uh, I just hope my weight cut is easy. <laughs> but, uh, just work out a lot of upper body and just, I, you know, I study the game of MMA more. You know, I watch a lot of tape. I, uh, I, I picked up a lot of my weaknesses and, uh, just try to work on that. And, um, uh, you know, just overall everything. Just, I try to stay busy right after the surgery. So there, there was no time to, uh, 
to relax. You know, I was always busy either working on my balance or working on my upper body or watching fights, so I was always busy. So do you think you'll be uh, hitting harder now with the extra upper body muscle and mass that you put on? Man, yeah, you know, I, I want to get one of those fucking knockouts where I just hit somebody cold and they're out, you know, that would be a very satisfying feeling, but I'm looking for anything, you know, I got to visualize a lot of different scenarios and, you know, I'm looking for three-round war, fast submission or knockout or TKL, so it doesn't matter. Back in your WSOF days, I know we talked a little bit about your diet and your conditioning, so have you changed anything in your diet since those days? Let me see. Well, I think... <laughs> No, and nothing changed. I mean, uh, other than uh, me eating a lot of pizza <laughs> and uh, drinking some beer, but I didn't get <laughs> I didn't get no fat from that. But uh, you know, I, I love pizza and the beer a lot. So, uh, but nothing changed. Everything stayed the same. <laughs> well, nothing wrong with that. Actually, I think that's the cowboy Cerrone diet. It seems to have worked pretty well for him. <laughs> I just hope one day I get sponsored by Corona. You know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a big. I'm not, I know I'm not Mexican, but I'm a big fan of Corona beer, so hopefully one day I'll just get something. Do you like it with the lime or without? I like it without. I always think that little citrus bite makes it better. I don't know, it's just me. But yeah, anyway. I like, sometimes, yeah, maybe if I, if I go over eight beers, yeah, maybe I'll start adding the lime so it could change the taste a little bit. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. So, how's everybody in your training camp doing besides you? There's plenty of big fights coming up for all sorts of people. They're doing good, you know. Uh, I've been uh, working with Lorenz a lot, and uh, Lorenz has a big fight January second. He's been staying in my house, gonna be like three and a half weeks now. And then um, we also have some uh, a new kid named Joshua Avilas. We used to fight for uh, King the Cage champion, so he's a pretty good addition, pretty good fifty-five pounder. Uh, Said is rehabbing his hand because he broke it his last fight, but uh, we have a lot of good fighters here, man. A lot of up and comers. Now, Larkin's facing Tumanov, right? Yes, he's facing uh, Einstein, right? That's his nickname? Right, right. Einstein Tumanov. Yeah, yeah. What's his strategy for that fight? I know Tumanov's got a lot of hype on him, and he's got like four or five wins in a row. Yeah, I think uh, he's asking for a wrong matchup. I I heard that he supposedly called out Lorenz, and uh, Lorenz is looking extremely good right now. He's Man, he's so fast. He's like a 35-pounder. And uh, I just think... Uh, He's going to put it on him, you know, even though I'm Russian. But, you know, he's part of my team. He's like a brother to me. So, uh, Lorenz is going to come out with the finish for sure. Well, he did in his last two fights. So, if it's anything like either of those performances, I'm sure he'll do really well. Oh, yeah. He looked great last two performances. Yeah, especially that Ponson Abibio fight. He sure manhandled him through the course of that fight. He got the fight of the night bonus for it. Oh, yeah. You know, and, 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 and he beat Robbie Lawler, which is the current champ right now for uh, UFC. Yeah, I think a lot of people forget that because it was back in the Strike Force days, but that is a very impressive win on his resume. Yeah, I think I think uh Lawrence is a future champ, you know. Uh he's uh he's training hard and uh he's giving a lot of advice and he's just, he's just great guy, great person and great training partner. Well, no doubt he's soaking it all up and uh you mentioned Sato I was recovering from a broken hand, so uh what's his timetable like to come back? I think maybe, uh, I'm not a doctor, but I, I think he's already, uh, like moving it and, uh, maybe another month he should be back. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to seeing him again. Another big Bellator fight. I'm sure Scott Coker and Rich Dow probably already got something in mind for him. Yeah, man. Just can't wait for him to fight. And we can't wait to see you fight on December 4th. It's going to be an exciting card at the event center in San Jose. And the main event, of course, is going to be a potentially title shot for Josh Punk Thompson. He said he only wants title shots in his future. So what do you think of that matchup with him and Pablo Villaseca? Uh, I think it's a, uh, it's a good, I don't know about the other guy, whatever, uh, I forgot his last name, but, uh, you know, Josh Thompson is a pretty tough fighter. And, um, uh, I think if he comes out on top, uh, It'll be a good matchup for Will Brooks, but I, I see Will Brooks being him. You know, Will Brooks is just uh, is a very intelligent fighter. He knows uh, he finds the weaknesses, and he kind of makes you fight his fight. So, uh, if Josh Johnson do get a title shot, I feel like uh, you know Will Brooks might come on top. Yeah, it'll be a very interesting fight if it does take place. But you're right, Will Brooks. He, he tends to find people's weaknesses and exploit them. That's that's been his strategy throughout his title defense. 
Yeah, I, I know a lot of people uh, criticize him, but, uh, you know, we fighters, we got to find a way to beat them. You know, that, that's how we make money. You know, if it's, if it's boring, well, sorry, you know, that's, <laughs> that's, that's how you find a way to beat somebody. But uh, I feel like a lot of fans just criticize you for sometimes not getting a finish. Well, I don't think they criticize you too much for that because you get lots of finishes. And In fact, the thing is, with your fight with Bubba Jenkins, I was already recapping it that night, and I, I wrote that it was a masterful performance. And then somebody on my own website one-upped me and put a gif up of you winning the fight and said you had frozen Bubba Jenkins with your submission. Yeah, dude, I, I, I really didn't feel like it would go that way. I thought, you know, we could have this grueling three-round fight where he's going to try to grind me out and win a decision, but uh, I think after he made those comments, I know it was just for promoting. I kind of went into like, okay, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta kill this kid. I gotta, I gotta do something that, you know, he never went through. So I tried to pressure him with my stand up. I didn't even throw any punches. I tried to throw a kick. He went for a takedown, but uh, I was trying to pressure him with a lot of feints. So he could make that mistake and shoot in, so, and, and he actually did that, so ended up getting caught in the guillotine. Yeah, so he took the bait then, but uh, it sounds to me like you, you did take it a little bit personally then. Uh, yeah, I did, and then I had to calm down. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm deep, deep down inside, I'm a fighter, and uh, when you make comments about families and stuff like that, I don't care if it's for promoting. I, I uh, you know, my, my mentality changes right away. Do you find that a lot of wrestlers make that mistake? Because I've seen that several times recently in big fights where guys shoot in early. Like, Clay Guida did the exact same thing. Like, he shot in for that takedown right away. And when somebody goes for it so early in a fight, there's no way to slip out of that guillotine. You're not, you know, worked up enough sweat to pop out of that hole. Yeah, I think uh, wrestlers need to, like, uh, I, I think, first of all, I, I respect every wrestler there is. Like, you know, wrestling is a very tough sport. It, every time I wrestle, it's so hard on my body. So when I when I fight guys like Lance Palmer and Bubba, you know, it's, it's, you got to respect them. So uh, I think they should just, they shouldn't shoot right away. They should just keep us standing for a little bit and, you know, then go for shots. And, uh, you know, I think main thing is to be well-rounded. And you, you, you can look at Bubba's last fight. He looked very well-rounded. And also... Uh, Lance Palmer's been looking really good. So, uh, you know, I think they're learning to be one round of fighters and utilize their wrestling later on in the rounds. Yeah, in fact, I think that, that fight you had with Palmer was the one that turned his whole game around because, like you said, ever since then, he went on to win the title and defend it successfully, and he's got another title defense coming up here in a couple of weeks after Bellator 147. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's been doing really good. And, uh, and uh, you know, the, the, like I said, there's, they just got to be well-rounded, and their wrestling will work for them. Well, you're certainly a well-rounded fighter in your own right, and always good to talk to you. So I want to give you this chance before we go, Mr. Karkanyan, to uh, throw up plugs, social media links, anything else you want to promote. Uh, just tune in December 4th, live on Spike TV. Uh, last Bellator show of the year. It's going to be pretty good, exciting fight. And, you know, I'm, I'm personally looking to deliver an exciting fight. And uh, thanks to all my sponsors. South Coast Mitsubishi, uh, Hayabusa, uh, Original Grappler, and uh, uh, Dr. Kessler. All right. It's going to be an exciting fight at the Event Center in San Jose on December 4th, Bellator 147, the final show of the year, and in the co-main event, Georgie Karakanyan fighting the weasel, Daniel Weichel. You don't want to miss it. Thank you again for the time today. Thank you. All right. And thanks, CJ. Yeah.